Hey guys, Sven here with a new Northcast market update titling this hollow victory for May 31st. The month of May has closed. Sorry I was able last week, but we were in Greece on vacation. It was really nice. Uh, not full season yet, so it was quiet and uh, we had the beaches to ourselves, so no complaints. A little R&R &R never hurts. Wanted to follow up on some charts and some perspective on these markets. First of all, you may recall me talking about the wall, the monthly 20 MA, and lo and behold, bulls managed to close 41.80, just above the monthly 20 MA, 41.68. So recall I said that that's a key measuring stick, whether you're in a bull market, a new bull market, or whether you're still in the bear market. I also said, very important addition to this, we need to see a sustained move, a move that builds on this and then defends the monthly 20 MA on any back tests. We're not there yet. I mean, this is this is maybe well, you want to claim it the initial victory, if you will, a close above it. And then if you close above it and you can defend it, then yeah, you can make the case. You know, this was all a big flag and we broke out and off we go to the trend line here which is around you know, 43 4400 depending on when you hit it that was the case i made in the interview i believe with wealthy on about three months ago before the banking crisis but this hurdle needs to be recaptured that was my point as it was resistance many times before in in true bear markets if you will the alternative view, and I shared that with you as well uh, before, is the potential for this all being a massive bear flag. And lo and behold, actually, we just tagged that top trend line as well, and we saw an initial rejection. So the point would be, okay, well, this is validating the trend line. So we still remain in a very iffy phase of the market between a potential breakout and a potential much larger macro breakdown to come so let's look at this market here this is the s p 500 for the month of may and then we've talked about this before i know everybody's well aware of it by now this is all driven by tech and the overall market actually is dreadful that's why i'm referring to all this as being a very hollow victory because of what it took to get to this point in fact if you look at the performances of the main indices for the month of may S&P 0.25%. You know, everybody keeps talking about breakouts, a new bull market. What's that? That's nothing. It really isn't. Small caps down almost 1%. Dow down 3.5%. It's tech, 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 tech in a few stocks, right? Up 7.6%. The Wilshire being the larger index, uh, up 2.5% driven by tech. But if you look at the broader NICE, which doesn't have tech in it there as much, down 4%. Banks down 6.3% and equal weight down 3.76%. And you had me talk about equal weight back in April, where I said this market is terrible. In May has shown it continues to be terrible. It got worse. In fact, if you look at this chart here of equal weight, you know, this potential head and shoulders is still there. I mean, the shoulder may be getting long in the tooth, if you will. But guess what? Today we closed right on the neckline. How is that a new bull market? It's not. It's 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 dreadful, and this it just speaks to the complete underperformance. And it's the worst underperformance we've seen in the underlying stocks vis-a-vis -vis the index since the year 2000. It's quite the story. So, you know, for all the bullish rah rah, I just like to point this out. You know, today the S&P on month of May closed below the February high. It closed below the May one high. Yeah, this is just not a confirmed breakout at all. You know, and it has the potential still, I suppose, but this could also turn into a failed breakout. Bulls need to get across the 20 MA and stay above it and defend it. And what's interesting is that what it took to get there, I think that to me is, is really interesting. I mean, we've seen all these stocks. I'll just use a couple of examples here. Microsoft going absolutely vertical outside the daily Bollinger Band. That's yesterday's close, by the way. And of course, we all know about NVIDIA going nuts. And on all these stocks adding, you know, trillions of dollars in market cap, cap combined apples with a few bucks of all time highs. These stocks are smoking hot overbought and completely stretched thin. And so you have to then ask yourself, OK, well, a couple of questions. One is, how is that sustainable without a pullback, you may ask? 
be, and I'm not even going to go into the fundamentals of AI. I'm just talking technically here. And then two, uh, how are you going to get further on the S&P without the broader market participating? You need the broader market to participate. And, and it's not only in the broader market uh, outside of tech, it's inside of tech as well. I've shown this chart before, the advanced decline index on, on the NASDAQ vis-a-vis -vis the NDX 100. Uh, there, there's been absolutely no improvement during the entire month of May. In fact, we just made new lows. So th what you hear in terms of bullish narratives, let's be absolutely clear and honest here. The, if, if you take out the top eight, 10 tech stocks, everything is still in a bear market. Nothing's changed on that equation. And yeah, we get macro data coming in like today PMIs and yesterday that Dallas manufacturing. What what is the bullish story here? I mean, the, these numbers are showing dreadful declines still. And that's before we actually get the full impact of lag effects. And now you, you may get the chasing of, hey, maybe the Fed's going to pause or what have you, but the fundamental picture is still what it is, right? And that's, this is what the broader market is reflecting, in my view. That's why you don't see that follow through. So all this may be really deceiving. It's quite something to see such a divergence. I, frankly, I've never seen it before. And it's, it's quite confounding. Just a couple added charts here. You know, here's NDX. This is components above the 50 MA as we melt it up here. Well, you know, we got about half of components actually above the 50 MA. And it's gotten weaker and weaker from rally to rally in 2023. I mean, just compare it to where it was in February, 78. Now it's at 52. It's even worse on the S&P. Closed a month with 70% of components below the 50 MA. Vis-a-vis -vis February at 75. That, you know, how, how do you reconcile this? What are you basically seeing here is that price, as you know, so much, so greatly influenced by, you know, seven, eight stocks, this is completely deceiving. Basically, what this says is without these seven, eight stocks, the index would actually be below, be below the 50 MA. That's a very different picture. So it's, it's a very confusing time. And let me put NDX here a little bit in perspective as well. I mean, this, this move here, absolutely stunning. Certainly went farther than I expected. I mean, completely vertical. You know, most of the bots since the top here in, in late of 2021. And guess what it did? It hit the 61.8 fit. It poked above. Here's another channel trend line you can find. Found that as resistance and, and reversed. This, I'm just, you know, I'm not calling for anything in particular here, but I'm, I wanted to highlight that this is not unusual. We've seen this before. And I, yes, a tired example, but I have to bring it up, right? Because what we had here was obviously SVB, and then we had the intervention, and then we had this complete meltdown. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened in 2008. We had Bear Stearns, we had the intervention, we had a complete meltdown that brought NDX back above the 61.8 FIP. Tried it three times, ding, 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 failed each time, and then ultimately broke that channel pattern, and then everything changed. So if you look at these charts like NVIDIA and Microsoft that I mentioned as examples earlier, you know, that I saw overbought, is it really that inconceivable to say we will not see a pullback in tech? You know, how this all plays out to be determined. But I'm just saying this construct here uh, of a massive rally into May, maybe, maybe beginning of June, uh, for a poke above the 61.8 FIB, that's basically what we've seen before as well. So before everybody gets hyper bullish about you know the possibilities here, be warned, this could all turn bad as well. So nothing is, is really decided here at this point. In June, you know, we're going to have another FED meeting, we have CPI, we, you know, the same spiel again, but no longer any earnings reports, uh, but certainly technicals and more economic reports coming through. I will just close here on this note to say, you know, if, if you hear any big victory declarations, I'd be cautious with these because in context of this February high, 41.95, close today, 41.79, we haven't gone anywhere. 
Not at all. This May 1st high, 4186, close below that. You know, this uptrend here is not broken. We had a little fake outbreak last week. But notice, you know, the algos are respecting these trend lines. This is all tightening. Um, there's a lot more that has to be negotiated through. And bulls really need the market to broaden out. Um, with tech this overbought and these big key important components and so far at least there's no evidence of the market broadening out not even into month end which was kind of interesting see what happens in early june there's some positive seasonality and there's some weaker seasonality fed meeting i think it's going to be a really really interesting month in june how this all shakes out where the bulls can confirm that breakout above the monthly 20 ma or whether this is going to result in miserable failure anyway that's just kind of my highlight thoughts here if you want to join us on the journey on the details uh you're free to join us via the website daily market brief live action alerts or market videos hope that's helpful and i hope you guys all had a good month of may and good luck in june take care